Well, welcome everyone to Recovery. Coming to you live right now from State Street Methodist Church on the Recovery Channel. Glad you all can make it. Glad you all can tune in. Ready? Welcome to Recovery at Bristol, and here at Recovery, we love Jesus, and we have seen him work miracles here, and you could be that next miracle. We want you to know that this is a safe place for you to share, or ask questions, or to just come and hang out. 
Recovery at Bristol is for anyone dealing with chemical addiction, compulsive behavior loss, relationship issues, or life challenges, and that's everyone. The smart people come and get help for it. Scripture is the foundation for all of our teaching here, and the 12 steps of AA are derived from Scripture and are our daily tools for recovery. We also have a strong partnership with AA, NA, and Al-Anon, and if you need any help getting into those groups, please let us know. If you would like to participate in online giving, text GIVE to 276-218-8100 or visit our online giving portal at statestreetumc.com slash giving. Welcome. We're glad that you're here. Y'all wave at each other. Good to see you. Hey, Tom, where are you back in the back there?
Spirit, it's on me. You are my Jesus who loved me. Yeah. Part of our recovery journey is going through the 12 steps together. So tonight I'll say the step, and if you will say the following scripture that appears on the screen. Step one, we admitted we were powerless over our addictions and compulsive behaviors, that our lives had become unmanageable. I know that nothing good lives within me, that is in my sinful nature, for I have a desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. Romans 7, 18. Step two, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. For it, For it is God, God who works, works in you to will, will and to act accordingly to his good purpose. Philippians 2, 13. Step three, we made a decision to turn our life and will over to the care and loving concern of God. Therefore, I urge you, sisters and brothers, in view of God's great mercy, to offer yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Romans 12, 1. Step 4. We made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Let us examine our ways and test them, and let us return to the Lord. Limitations 340. Step 5. We admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. James 5, 16. Step 6. We were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. James 4.10 Step 7. We humbly ask him to remove all of our shortcomings. If we, if we confess, confess our sins, he is faithful, faithful and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1.9 Step 8. We made a list of all persons we had harmed, and became willing to make amends to them all. Do to yeah. others as you would have them do to you. Luke 6.31 Step 9. We made direct amends to such people whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Therefore, Therefore if you are offering your sins at the altar, they and never remember, remember someone has something, something against, against you, you Leave your gift there in front, front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother or sister. Then come and offer your gift. Matthew 5, 23, 24. Step 10. We continued to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. So, if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Step 11, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and power to carry it out. Let the, Let the word of Christ, Christ dwell in you daily. daily. Colossians 3.16 Step 12, having had a spiritual experience as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others and practice these principles in all of our affairs. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who are spiritual should restore them gently, but watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Galatians 6, 1.
that band. Well, if you're tuning in on Facebook tonight, I want to apologize if you tried to tune in last week. We had an incompetent person uh, responsible for the video feed. Uh, he has been fired and is now the preacher. Uh, never to be allowed back there again. But we have posted that uh, somewhere in video land. And I have to believe that because there were so many problems, there must be something on there that somebody needs to see. So I would encourage you, even though it's a little choppy and a little disjointed, uh, that it might be worth finding and seeing. But we're very glad that you're here with us tonight and, and joining those of us that are in person. And again, we invite you to come. Right now we have two groups going. We have a grief, a grief group. And, and then we have another group that's for all of life's problems. And so, you know, if you don't have any place to be, this is the place to be. And don't forget that when you come here, you leave with a goodie bag. And tonight we're having some extra special good stuff. I'm not going to say what it is because I really want you to feel more and more disappointed that you weren't here tonight. So come on down, 7 o'clock, and we'd love to have you. All right, our prayer list tonight, there are several names. Uh, Summer Wells, Lisa R., Doug S., Galen S., Timmy F., Ethan W., Sarah S., Bridget G., Ralph R., Alan L., Amber, an unspoken request, Gail R., Joyce S., Ms. B., Jesse, Ms. K., and Manfred. Are there any others that we've left off? All right, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, as we come to you tonight, we come seeing the beauty of your world that you have surrounded us with. Father, each day brings more and more beauty as, as we see the, the blooming flowers and we see plants growing and bursting forth. And Father, we see ourselves bursting forth in your name. Father, we thank you for all the ways you bless us. And we ask that you continue to be in our life bringing your blessings. And Father, we also ask for those that we have named tonight your special blessing. Father, there are those that need healing from illness, those that are coping with grief, those who are dealing with death, and those who are bearing the weight of the world. Father, be in each life. Lift them up. Let them feel your presence and know your love. And fathers, we come here now. We ask that you open our hearts, open our minds, that we may hear the message that you have for us tonight. For we ask this in Christ's name. Amen.
Well, as I was getting ready tonight for this scripture, it was tough to kind of think of something to say, but let me read you the scripture tonight, and then we're going to go down a special journey. This is from 2 Corinthians 5, verses 17 through 20a. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone and the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. May God bless the reading of His Word. Well, when I was younger, I enjoyed playing Monopoly. Sort of. You know, Monopoly, I guess I almost said monotony. And, and, and sometimes that, that, that's the way that game turns out to feel like to me that it's a lot of fun when you start. You got lots of money, you're going around the board, you're happy, you're accumulating stuff, and then you realize this thing could go on forever. We could be here all night. Or things start to go south, and you start losing your money, and you're bankrupt, and, and you've lost all your stuff, and then you go to jail. And it's hard to get out of jail. You know, when you get stuck in jail, in Monopoly, it's hard to get out. It's hard to get out of real jail. But in Monopoly, there's a trick. Because in Monopoly, if you're lucky, you draw that get out of jail free card. Now, you don't have to use it every, you know, when you go to jail. You can save it. You can do other ways to get out. But you can keep that the whole game and use it when you really need it. And it's great to be able to get out of jail like that. Well, to me, that's really what being associated with Jesus Christ is like. That's what our salvation is like. We don't do anything to earn salvation. It's free. Just like that get out of jail car. It's free because of what Jesus Christ did for each of us. All we have to do to get it is to believe in Jesus Christ and to show that we believe in Jesus Christ. How do we do that? We show that we show our belief by loving God, loving ourselves, and loving one another. Paul tells us in this passage that we are ambassadors to Christ that we are to take the message of Jesus Christ to the world. We are to transform the world. Now, a lot of times we focus on loving God and loving each other. But I want to talk tonight about loving ourselves. Because when you think about loving yourself, you're talking about transformation of you. Because we can't transform the world until we have transformed us. You know, I can't influence anybody else until I've influenced me. Transformation is what creates this new thing that Paul is talking about. This new thing that's freed because of what Christ has done for us. But transformation is not easy. You know, we struggle with lots of things in our lives. We struggle with with, uh, some people with addiction. Some people struggle with loss, with grief. Some people struggle with gambling. Some people struggle with trying to not eat chocolate when they're at the grocery store and trying to go through the line without buying that big Milky Way that's there on sale this week. I mean, we struggle with lots of stuff, and we want to change. We want to be transformed. 
And Jesus offers us that way to be transformed. The 12 steps are about transformation. The 12 steps are a guide to transformation. But I have to want to transform. I have to, I have to hear people who tell me I need to change. I, I need to look in the mirror and see myself and say, you know, I need to make a change. And I need to begin that process of transformation. What's that like? Well, think about all the beauty that you see going on right now. You know, a few months ago when you looked in outside, you just saw dirt. And suddenly you saw things begin to sprout up and there was this change, this beauty, color. You know, I, I planted t tomatoes and I look today and I've got three or four little tomatoes, okay? I can hardly wait till they're big. I love fresh tomatoes. I used to live to go to my grandmother's back in the old days when she would bake biscuits. And we would put mayonnaise on those biscuits and onions and tomatoes and we would just eat those. That was like the greatest thing in the world. And then for dessert, we'd have blackberry dumplings. Just can't get food like that anymore. But that's what the transformation of our world looks like right now. It's all that beauty. That's what we look like as we're transforming ourselves. But sometimes transformation gets hard. Now, we get through a lot of things in our life and we get better and we rejoice that we've transformed or we think we've transformed. And we rejoice, other people around us rejoice, but who rejoices most in our transition or transformation is God. Because God sees this new thing that is us. But when transformation becomes difficult, it gets difficult because we start to doubt that we're worth changing. We start going back and instead of looking at the future, we look at the past. And we say, you know, I've done some really bad things. I've been in jail. I've, I've hurt people. There, there's no way that I can be forgiven. There's no way that somebody should forgive me. And you know, the truth is, that's exactly right. We have all done some very bad things. But you see, that's where the sacrifice of Jesus Christ comes in. Because we can never do enough to reconcile ourselves with God. We've just been so bad. We don't have enough goodness to be fully reconciled with God. But no matter what we've done, Jesus stands before God for each of us. And God forgives us. No matter what we've done. You see, we say, oh, I can't be forgiven. But the reality is to be forgiven, all we have to do is accept that Jesus Christ is in charge and not us. That's it. Because everything else, salvation and acceptance and forgiveness, is all free. We don't have to do anything for it. But when you're set free... What happens to you? That's when you're really transformed. Because you're no longer weighted down by the thought of the things you have done or the things you might do because you're now moving in that place where you're focused on loving God, loving yourself, and loving one another. We transform ourselves when we get to that place of loving ourselves. How many times have we beat ourselves up because we said, oh, I'm just not lovable. But God loves us. God loves all of us. Jesus loved us enough to die for us. You see, people struggle all the time with should I 
inner recovery? Should I try to change? It's very hard. It's too hard. I'm not worthy. Yet Jesus is saying, come to me and I will walk with you. You can be forgiven of what has happened in your life. And you see, when we know that forgiveness is there, we don't have to worry anymore. We don't have to struggle with what other people think. We just have to move forward walking with Jesus. Now that sounds easy, but we all know it's not easy. That's why we are assembled here tonight, because we cannot do this transformation by ourselves. It takes help. It takes other people. Jesus is walking with us, but we also need the help of others. Changing ourselves is the hardest thing we will ever do because we don't want to change. You know, I don't want to change. I like the way I am. If I change, I'm going to be uncomfortable. You know, I... I'd like to say that my wife put me on a diet and I lost a bunch of weight. And I hope she's not watching tonight. Uh, but, but I did. I lost a bunch of weight. And, and it was great until I realized that now my clothes don't fit. I got to get new clothes. I have changed. And, and it's inconvenient to change. If I've been addicted to something and I give that up, well, that change creates a difference in me that initially I have trouble reconciling. That's why we need other people in our life. That's why we need this place so that we can come together, so that we can come together in love and know that God is here with us, and that our journey is not a journey that we're making alone. It's not a journey that we alone are making it's a journey that others have made and they know the way and they can guide us and help us and get us home that is recovery that is transformation transformation is about the new us and the new us oh is worth so much we should all seek that newness let us pray Father, we are all struggling to change something in our lives. Father, we are grateful that we are here among people who also are seeking change and seeking to help us change. Father, we thank you for this place. And Father, we ask that if there's anyone here tonight or watching who is trying to decide about change, that you would put on their heart to seek Jesus, to seek change, and to seek the newness that comes with transformation. For we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. And now it's time for the band. For Jonathan, isn't it, Jonathan? Look at him smiling over there. Jonathan turns 40. Happy birthday, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Like me, 
close with the serenity prayer God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference living one day at a time enjoying one moment at a time accepting hardships as the pathway to peace taking as Jesus did the sinful world as it is not as I would have it trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will that I may be reasonably happy in this world and supremely happy with him in the next amen thank you for joining us and being here God bless you